Good to see you all here this morning. Let us go to the Lord in prayer as we begin. Our Father and our God, again, we give you thanks, give you praise, give you honor, God, for this another opportunity, Father, that you've allowed us to come together to worship you in your word. And Father, I ask this morning again, once that the Holy Ghost would come and be our teacher, once again, that he would show us what you would have us to know. And Father, that this word will not return to you, Lord, but it will accomplish what you will. I pray, God, you open our hearts and our minds to receive, God, because it's be to all your honor and to your glory. In Jesus' name we ask, and amen. amen. There's something happened here in the church a, a few weeks ago that uh, very few know about, and I want to share this with you because I think it's powerful. And I'm not going to call a name because you all know who I'm talking about because this is going out. But a, uh, a girl's been coming here to church for a few months, and you know it, this is all new to her because she she'd never been in a, a full gospel church before, and so before this uh, pandemic really struck, she was here on a Sunday morning, and I don't know I can't remember that the, what happened, but anyway. I had my prayer shawl in my hand. And I just passed by her. I said, you know what this is? She said, no, i never seen anything like that before. I said, you know the story of the woman with the issue of blood that touched the hem of, of, of Jesus' garment? Yeah. I said, this is what she touched. And she just grabbed it. Well, I thought that was a little strange. Well, Goes on, you know, and most there for a few months, we kind of shut down a little. Well, when she came back, she came over to me and she said, How did you know that I had a bleeding problem? I said, I didn't know. She said, You know, I said, when I touched that thing right there, she said, My, I, my bleeding stopped. Praise the Lord. Yeah. You see, the, we, do, we, as I've taught so many times before, we don't know the, the Jewish customs and the things that God has, has, has laid out for us to do. But there's a lot of power in the prayer shawl. Because the Jewish people believe that the, the seat seat, this is the, these tassels right here, they believed that that had, had healing powers of a rabbi. A rabbi that wore those, they thought if they could touch their seat seat, they would be healed. And you see, the thing that I want to say about this situation was, that girl just had a childlike faith. That's what she said. See, that's, that's the danger of going to church in one sense. If you go to a church and they denominize you and tell you God don't do this and God don't do that and the other, you know, you're right. You've heard Pastor Bill talk about when he's on the street. They, these people with HIV come out and by faith and instantly was healed. Doctors couldn't do nothing about it, but God did. Amen. You see, we got to, that's the kind of faith we got to have. Jesus said, unless we become his children, we'll not enter the kingdom. A child believes what its father told him. So if we're going to have God for our father, we better believe what he said. Amen. Because he's going to do exactly what he said. Amen. You know. So, and another, another point I want to make on this, too. I had no idea that girl had a problem. You see, when you're walking in the Spirit, God will lead you somewhere to do something for somebody, and you'll never know it. Amen. You know, but that's the reason why, you know, that, that when we're out here in our everyday life, we don't know who we're going to pass by or who we're going to talk to. You could speak one word to somebody and change their whole life Amen. Amen. and never know it, you know. Well, we'll go into our lesson this morning. We're in Romans 8, chapter, and the 16th verse. I want to start right there. 
Paul said, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, a joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. <clears throat> you know, he, he said there, if we suffer with him, we will be glorified together. Uh, Paul said in 2 Timothy 3.12, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. In the, in the Greek dictionary that I use, it said that persecution would not be a violent persecution. And you know, when, we, when you come to a church like this, you're going to be persecuted by the religious people because they, they don't believe like we do. You know, we just believe what God said, and that's all. They, they say, well, we believe it, but we just don't believe it hardly that. Yeah, you got to believe it exactly like God said it if you're going to get the promises that God is going, has given us. Amen. You know, you... You can't, you can't pick and choose the verses that you like. It's the, it's the whole book, you know. You know, but I also, too, uh, he said if we, we'll be heirs and joint heirs, I mean, that's something that you're going to get as much as Jesus Christ. You equally share with Jesus Christ the promises that God has made if you are a child of God. And the only way you know that you're a child of God, they said, the Spirit bears witness that we are of Him. Amen. You know. So, let's go on to verse 18 here. He said, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed. In, in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. This is what Paul said here. But, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Our little mind can't comprehend what we, what's waiting on us. Amen. You know, people, that, they try every way in the world to stay in this world. If we knew what was waiting on us, we'd be going to get out of here as soon as possible. Because, I mean, all the violence and everything that's going on in our, in our country today, you know, that's not going to be when you're in the presence of God. It's going to be all peace, love, and joy. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I truly believe this. I mean, this is for me as I've got older, you know. I pray the prayer, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Because I, I have read enough in this book that I know that what's waiting on me is far better than what I got here. I don't care if I own this, this whole county and this whole earth. It's nothing to be compared to what God has prepared for the ones that love him. Amen. Yeah. I mean, we, all we've got down here is troubles and trials. You yeah. know. People say, well, I'd like to have this thing or that thing. Anything you've got somewhere or another is going to cause you problems. I don't care if it's a house, a car, you name it. it, it, it. Temporal. Yeah. It, yeah. It, yeah, what, what we're going to, it'll never pass away. It, 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 it. it to, to be in the presence of God for eternity. I mean, our, our minds can't comprehend that, you know. 19 said, 
For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifest manifestation of the Son of God. The word creature there means creation, God's creation. Creation is waiting for our manifestation. When, when God re, uh, renovates this earth, or even, even before that time, I think, when Jesus Christ comes and sits on the throne of his father David, there'll be a thousand years of peace, and the earth is waiting for that, because since the days of Adam, this earth has not known peace. But it will know peace when Jesus Christ, because the, the Bible tells us that he's going to rule with a rod of iron. In other words, if Jesus Christ was on the earth today, he wouldn't be putting up with what's going on. There'll be peace, you know. But he is the Prince of Peace, you know. And so, but see, we have been programmed to this world. You know, everything we do, we have been programmed in it. And, and I'm telling you, that's hard to get out of a lot of times. You know, as, as Pastor taught so, uh, a few weeks ago, we got to have a different mindset. Amen. Our, mi our mind, uh, see, th this is what, what a, a cult will do for people. They, they get them into that cult, and then they reprogram their mind. You know, well, we need to have our mind reprogrammed into Jesus Christ. We, we have, as the Bible says, we, have to, we need the mind of Christ. Amen. You know. 20 said, <clears throat> For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by the reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. The word uh, vanity means depravity. Amplified Bible uses the word frailty. You know. That, but you, if you notice there, the, he said, by reason of him who has subject the same in hope. That word hope is a very closely associated, if you go back into the Greek, it, it is very so closely associated with the word faith. You know. See, this whole thing of the Christian life, it's based on faith, you know, because Hebrews tells us without faith, it's impossible to please God. We've got to have the faith, you know. <clears throat> 21 said, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of the corruption in to the glorious liberty of the children of God. In other words, creation itself is going to be delivered from all this corruption and everything that we're having today. You know, it's going to, it, it's going to be delivered because the children of God are going to be Christ-like. Oh, yes, sir. 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. We don't ever think about it, but did you, have you thought about that the whole earth groaned with all that's going on? Look at the earthquakes, the, the volcanoes, and things like that. The earth is groaning for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, have you ever noticed a lot of times uh, if there's a bad storm coming up, animals know it a long time before you do? You know, yeah, they, they know before we do. You know. Well, the earth knows that, that there's something better coming than we do. You know, they, know, they know it's going to be delivered one of these days. You know, because they, the, the earth has been here since God created it. They know who created The earth knows who created it. It ain't, it ain't these scientists that said uh, some little boom happened and this and that and the other. You know how they go on with it. Man was started out as a little 
snail or whatever and, and evolved into a human being, all that foolishness they talked about. No, man was created by God and we are in the image of God. Amen. No, no. We may act like them, but we didn't come from them. <laughs> Verse 23, it said, Not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of the body. You know, you, we grown within ourselves. When, when, you, when you're really in Christ, you grown within yourself of the things that you see going on. I do. I'm growing it for some people. I mean, as I've told you many times, most of the people, their problem is their mouth. Just listen to them talk. You know, negativity. They, they curse themselves by what they say about themselves. You'll have, you know, uh, Revel, uh, Mark 11, 20, 23 says, we'll have whatever we say. You know, be careful what you said about yourself, you know. I, uh, I know Bishop, Bishop Jakes one time, he, he said, uh, what other people say about you won't make any difference. It's what you say about you that makes the difference. Amen. 24 said, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope? As I said a minute ago, that word hope is a lot, is very akin to, to the word faith. But you know that's that's true. If I if I have something here in my hand, then why am I looking forward to it? I've I've got it. You know. Well, that's that's what we're hoping, sir. We have never seen it yet. But we're hoping for it. We're having faith that it's that we're going that we're going to be there, and through Jesus Christ we will be there. You know, if we live that holy life that He commands us to live. But this is this is where religion has come in and, and deceived a lot of people. They say, "Well, you well you saved. You don't have to do this. You don't have to." God said it. You better be doing it. No, there will be no sin in heaven, folks. You know, all this, all this stuff that we're dragging around down here and worrying about, and this, that, it won't be there. You know, we won't have to worry about that stuff. Verse 27 says, But if we hope for what we see, what we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? You know? Let's say I, I'm I'm looking for hoping to, to get something out here in, in material life, whatever. You know, I have to wait patiently until it comes available. You know, let's say you you put in an order on Amazon, you have to wait patiently till you get it. You know, and that's and that's what what we have to do in this life. We need to be waiting patiently for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether we go by the way of the grave or while we go by the way of, of the rapture, whichever way we go, you know, we have to wait for it and live the life we need to live. See, as the old saying is, we're the only Bible some people ever read. You know. And, and I hate to hear somebody say, well, you know, if all, Old Deacon, Deacon so and so, if he does this, you know why I'm, I've never done that, and I know why I'm going to make. It. No, don't ever let somebody put down the kingdom of God because of you. <clears throat> Twenty six says, likewise, the Spirit also helps us with our infirmities. Now, the word infirmities means weakness; it don't mean sickness. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. 
The word intercession, uh, now that, that we, there's two intercessions in, in this section, and, and they're different Greek words. The word, word intercession right here means, means to, the Amplified says to plead in our behalf. In other words, the Holy Spirit pleads in our behalf when we're praying. We pray, for, see, he knows what is needed far more than I do. And so when you're praying in the Spirit, you don't know. But you're praying for something that's needed. You know, I've heard different times uh, <clears throat> that people will be wake, awakened or maybe in the day and somebody, somebody or a situation, just a name would come to them maybe and they go to praying for it. Well, that person may be in a, a, across the world somewhere, but you're, you're interceding for that person on their behalf. You know, and, it's life or death. and it, uh, most of the time it is, Joanne. It's life or death. Most of the time, when, when, the, when the Spirit uh, gives you an uh, unction to pray about something, a lot of times it is a life or death situation. Yeah. Now, see that that's the way God works. See we think we think that everything ought to be just down the line, you know. It's like I was saying about the girl that got the healing for touching the parasol. You know, most people say, Well that's crazy, that can't that can't happen. Don't ever count God out. That's the that's the that's the people's problem. As we say all the time, we're trying to put God in a box, and God's not going to fit in our box, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I've I've heard of people uh, that would be in a in an airplane and they and lose the engine, and, and and some of their relatives or some of their friends back home, all of a sudden they go to praying, you know. They they didn't know what was going on. They just knew they needed to pray for this person, you know. So that, that's that's what the Spirit does for us, you know. See, he, the the thing about the Spirit, he's not localized. He's worldwide. He he can be over this whole earth in one at the same time, you know. But you know, to, I think too many people think, well, he's only in the church house, you know. No. He's ever worked. Twenty-seven said, "And he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God." <clears throat> now that uh, that uh, that word intercession uh, there, uh, I'll get my my notes right here. That word means to deal with. The other one means, in, in the Greek, it means in behalf of. In other words, the Holy Spirit will deal with, with whatever situation we have to have. That's what he's saying here. You know, he, he can deal with it. But he's noticed there, he said he would deal with it according to the will of God. You know, I tell you, we... we we have really got a, a, a good thing going if we will just get in with it, you know. If we will just get in with God, God's going to take us through these these hard times. But this is something that, that is, is blowing my mind, you know. And all these pandemics and all the, all everything that's going on, have you heard the first one over any of these newscasts, because I don't watch, watch much of it, Nobody is, is talking about God taking care of things. 
It's always man's going to do it, you know, everything. Folks, till we get back and, and humble ourselves before God, we, we, we're not going to get out of this thing right, you know. It may, it may eventually die out, but we could be out of it tomorrow if, we, if this country would humble themselves before God. He said he would. He said, if my people will call, call on me and humble themselves, I'll heal the land. That's what he said. But pride's got this country. We're too proud to do it. You know, so. But this is one thing that, that I, 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 Pastor made a statement here the other day. But he said God is going to reveal himself before this thing's over with. I believe we're going to want God before it's over with. You know. Now here's a here's a verse that <clears throat> our time's about up, but here's a verse that too many people, in my opinion, are taking this out of context, you know. And verse twenty eight said, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. You know, something bad happens to somebody. Somebody automatically said, well, you know, the Bible says all things work together for good. I know you, you've heard somebody say something like that. You, know, you pull it out of context. No, you got to love God if it's going to work for your good. I know in my life, things that I thought was bad at the time actually turned out to be for the good, you know. God, God is moving me around through situations, you know. I, I would think, well, I'm going to go to this church, and this is where I'm going to settle here the rest of my life. Well, something would come up, I'd have to move on because I couldn't deal with what, what was happening, you know. But he said, who are called according to his purpose. We, every one of us, we're not here by accident. We've got a purpose. And we need to be getting about our purpose, if you will. <clears throat> it said, verse 29 said, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of the, his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. You know, there used to, uh, used to be an old doctrine that was, Pretty prevalent when I was a kid around this area of the doctrine of predestination. In other words, if God predestinated you to be saved, or it, and if and if, if He didn't predestinate you, there was no way you could be saved. You know, well that's totally against Scripture because Peter says it's not God's will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. You know, but the word predestinate means to determine beforehand. It's God's will that he has predestined all of us to be in the kingdom. But he has given man the free choice. I can if I want to, and if I don't want to, I don't have to. But he has also, he has told me the consequences if I don't. If I don't choose to be in the kingdom, then there's this place called hell. Hell. That I will spend eternity. We're going. To, we're going to spend eternity somewhere. You know, and it and it's not going to be on this earth all the time. It will be if you. It will be if you're in Jesus Christ. But if you're not in Jesus Christ, you won't. But he said that it, we are to be conformed to to be in the image of His dear Son. That is the will of God for everybody. We are to be like his son, Jesus Christ. You know, people say, well, you can't do that. Yes, you can. You can. Paul wouldn't have wrote it if, it, if you couldn't do it. It's left up to me. Do I want to do it or do I not? You know, is this world more important to me than him? That's, that's the choice I have to make. Verse 30, and then we'll stop right there. 
Verse 30, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he, he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. I brought this little uh, good. This is a new century version of the Bible. Let me read those those two words, uh, two verses out of out of the Bible. Verse twenty eight. He said, "And we know that in everything God works for the good of those who love Him. They are the people He called because that was His plan." God knew them before he made the world, and he chose them to be like his son, so that Jesus would be the firstborn of many brothers and sisters. God planned for them to be like his son, and those he planned to be like his son he also called, and, and those he called he also made right with him, and those he made right he also glorified. I thought that was a good ex explanation, basically, of that those verses, you know. But it is God's will that we be like Jesus Christ. You know, why, why did Jesus say <clears throat> in John, he said, the things that I do, ye shall do, and greater. Amen. If we're going to do that, then we have to be like him. You know, we can't be like the world and do the things of the Lord. Now, that's, that's the bottom line of it. And we've got too many people today out here it, in churches, going around doing ever ungodly things that they think about, and they think, "Well, we we're godlike." No, you're not. You know, even even the Pharisees, Jesus told them, "Ye are of your father the devil." You know, that'd be that'd be pretty hard. Somebody to say that to you, that to your face, but he did to them. But you see, this is the thing that Jesus always did. He always told the truth. You know, and that's the reason why they hate him. And when, you, and when you're doing the things of God, when you're doing what this Bible says, the world's going to hate you. You're not going to be the best, best like person in the community. You know. And another thing, when you, in this religious system that we're in and where we live here, when you, when you do the things of this, of this book, they're going to hate you because they don't do it. They think you don't have to do it. They think it's passed away. But, it, but he's still the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. If he, done it, if he done it 2,000 years ago, he still does it today. Unless, unless he makes some statement in there that it's canceled. So thank you for your attention. We'll pick up God's willing with verse 31 next week.